So, I found myself shopping again on the... Okay, we'll put the uh, included test leads on. Let's whack the leads on. First off, we'll check whether or not the supplied leads can even handle the full rated current. Because that'll be a bit of a bummer. We've got a power supplier that can source 10 amps, but you can't actually get it to your device under test. Oh, I don't like these forks. These fork connectors one bit. So they'll be changed that for banana jacks. I've got a few floating, it, floating around somewhere. Oh, these are terrible. Okay, that'll do for now. Get that out of the way. Let's pop this up here so you can probably see what's going on. Hopefully that's in the shot. Ah, uh, yes, right. Now the connectors. We'll throw some juice up its backside here. Right, let's uh, duck for cover. Three, two, one. Hey, good sign. We've got life. Righto, let's just crank, crank everything right up. 31.5 max volts, amps, I guess would be the 10 amps. Smoke and fire in three, two, one. Hey, well, it's still ringing the 10 amps. It's currently limiting like it should. Well, the leads are getting a bit toasty, but it's handling the 10 amps. Love it. Okay, that's that done. So the leads are, well, you didn't pay for the leads, for that way. Good enough. Okay, let's wind this down so we're not going to get ourselves into trouble. Now, with these power supplies, a good tip with the fine adjustments, try and set them to approximately halfway. It's a bit hard to do when, I'll tell you what, let's cheat a little bit. Turn them right down and then mark them as you would. Just mark that probably at, what's that? The, oh, it's a bit all over the shop. Six, seven, eight, seven thirty-ish mark, I guess. If you're relating it to a clock face. Doesn't really matter, it's just an, a visual cue. So if we turn our fine all the way to the other side, it should, st oh f it's gone past. Okay, we know roughly what's halfway now, so halfway, we be just past halfway. The reason why you do that is because you get your ballpark with your course adjustments, and then you can just fine, fine tune and you've got a little bit, little bit of leeway either side of your set point. It helps, it's not the most ideal setup, You'd rather want something programmable, like my old uh, Rigol. Throw a shot in here if I have it. But um, yeah, quick tip. What we'll do now is check the output voltage. And check it for accuracy to see how close it is to the on-screen display. You can see what's going on here. That's the main thing. Let's put on volts. Let's clip on our multimeter and we're showing no volts because we've dialed everything down. Let's start by increasing, I'll tell you what, we're gonna need a bit of current. So we've got something to charge the output caps. We'll go just there, okay, here we go. Okay, voltage is climbing, what can we settle on? Let's settle on 8.4 volts-ish. Use our fine just to bring it into the point. Oh, look at that, too easy, 8.4 volts. So if it's two LiPo cells you want, and you want to make a battery illuminator, there's your setting, 8.4 volts. Let's go to another common voltage. Audio equipment for cars, 13.8 is generally the go-to. Pretty easy, 13.8, so far so good. 24 volts is probably our next common. If we're talking automotive, wind it down with our fine adjustment, oh, bottomed out. So back a bit, come back, and then down again. It is touchy, super touchy. There you go, 24 volts, 24. Let's see how it regulates once we start putting load on it. And let's go to max, 31.4, 31.4. So far, so good, has yet to disappoint. Okay, let's load it up with our little electronic load and uh, see how it performs. Okay, got our little trusty electronic load rearing to go. We'll test everything through the, the onboard test leads rather than taking directly from the banana jacks. Just because you typically would be using some sort of lead to connect the device. Let's separate these puppies. Okay, so we've currently got the output current set about halfway. So I'm guessing it's gonna be around the five amp mark. 
but for testing load, this is only a 60 watt, 30 volt max tester, but it will test up to 10 amps. But I don't think, mm, yeah, we probably could get our 10 amps out of this. We'll see how we go. We'll just ramp, put some random voltages in. So we're sitting at 5.4 volts now. You're testing a five volt device. 5.4 is fairly common. You allow for voltage drop across your leads, depending on the quality of your leads. Um, wouldn't hurt a five volt circuit generally. So we'll screw this down to, let's say, what this voltage I'm adjusting now is just the dropout voltage. So if this sees less than the dropout, it cuts out rather than damage your device on test. So we will set it to four volts. What did that jump to three? Oh, okay, decimal points. Okay, current. Okay, we'll start at 200 milliamps and see how we go. Hey, readings are great. 200 milliamp, 200 milliamp. Okay, let's start winding it up and see what we can get out of it. One of two things will happen. This will go into constant current mode or this will say, hey, hey, no more. You're gonna exceed my limits. Carry on like a bit of a pork chop. But haven't blown it up yet. Good safety feature. Oh, it's going great. Uh, regulating, mm, it's dropped 100 millivolts. Oh, that's a little bit. How you doing? So that actually, what? What just happened there? 3.1 amps. Ah, went to constant current mode. Let's try that again. Well, I'll give you one thing. The current reading is bang on. Well, I don't give this much credit. I haven't really tested this for accuracy, but it's ballpark, it's good enough for what we're doing here. Okay, so we're going up. So we got to about three amps and everything just dropped out. Okay, that's five, two, three amps. Ah, there we go. So this must be set to about three amps. I went to current, constant current mode and the voltage dropped off. So that feature works fine. Let's screw that right down. Let's go to another. Let's go to something else. Let's go to 13.8. That'll do. 13.8. Common voltage for said testing automotive equipment. Let's give it a bit more beans on the uh, on the output current. I don't know what that is. To set this current prior to using it on a device, you need to short your test leads together, your output leads together. And once you've done that, you can set the current to the maximum limit that you would like. Then obviously disconnect the leads, connect them to your device under test, and then you know um, you won't exceed your set current rating. So it's great for uh, fault finding or if something has a fault and you know it's got a short within, you're not gonna smoke things up, which is always handy. Okay. Oh, actually we didn't set our dropout voltage. Uh, we're sitting at 13.8, so we'll sit at 12 here just to be on the safe side. And we'll start cranking up. So we know our dropout's about three amps. Even though we've increased our voltage, the output current is still set to three amps. I tell a lie, I've adjusted it a little bit, so we'll find out where it drops out now. It'll be slightly more than three amps. 1.7 amp, 2, 2.1. Load regulation is not bad. It is dropping off, but it could be could be voltage drop across our leads. I don't know how well they're terminated to the crock clips. Well, well in fact, these fork clips are fairly well terminated. They've actually stripped, folded over, inserted the uh, bare wire and crimped. So that'll, that'll be a reasonably good connection. I'm banking that um, this won't be that great. Let's, while we're here, let's have a look at that. Oh yeah, yuck. Nah, that's uh, shit, sorry. In fact, just that 2.5 amp, that junction there is warm to the touch, fairly, fairly warm. Yeah, I don't like that at all. If that was me, that'd be soldered and crimped. Like I said, you're not paying for your leads. Let's keep going. 2.5 amps, six, three, okay, we're up to the three amp mark. I'm not sure where this will drop out, but it's gonna be more than three amps. Still in constant voltage mode. Getting significant. Okay, our heat sink's getting a bit toasty. Fan's starting to ramp up. Still dropping, we're about 300, 
220 milliamps under the target here. Putting that down to voltage drop, 4.2 amps. All right, that must have been constant current. Set this back to that. No. Okay, back onto it. Yeah, that voltage drop is a bit too much for me. Okay. Let's see if that is a voltage drop issue. Let's put our test leads directly onto the output. Let's swap them around. Sorry, not the most scientific way. Thirteen seven. Oops. Thirteen seven four nine, and then off. Yeah. Is like probably just on 200 millivolts across the leads. Those shit connections on the well, I got a clip. All right, four point, call it four amps. It's going to drop out again at some point. All right, we've just entered the constant current and it's all over. Well done. All right, let's go to some other crazy voltage uh, 28 volts. Yep, 28 and we'll give it a bit more beans. I don't think that uh, this load's gonna get that high. Uh, 12 volts, two amps to start with, and we will go, let's set, oh, what's going on here? Drop out voltage to, Let's say 26. All right, it won't go any higher than 25. That'll do. So that's 50 watts. Sorry, a bit more than 50 watts. Yep, two amps of 28. 56 watts. The max of this is 60. So I guess we won't be increasing. All right, it won't let me advance anymore because it knows on its internal calculation, we're going to exceed 60 watts, and it says no more. Well, good enough test. It does what it needs to do. We know that the constant current works. That's another win. Good stuff. Just a side note, I've turned the electronic load off and we're sitting at 28 volts and look at our output. This thing's $80 delivered. <sighs> Jeez, couldn't buy that from J-Car anywhere close to this price, unreal. Okay, we've got you set up with the oscilloscope, hooked up to the test leads, uh, just generic test leads with little hook hook connectors. We have, we're not using, a, um, not using a probe at the moment because we're not measuring for noise, we're just measuring uh, overshoot. So typical setup, you've got your leads connected to your device under test. We're doing it under no load at the present because uh, if we did uh, under load, it may soften any impact as far as overshoot's concerned. So we wanna know what a no load overshoot um, from turn on is. Like I said earlier, this is separating the mains from the logic and the switch mode supply for the low voltage of this uh, unit. <laughs> 